Hi, this is Rishi Agarwal, and in this video we're going to be talking about the frontal chest radiograph, the anatomy of the mediastinum, and my systematic approach to looking at and interpreting chest x-rays. So in this video we're going to be really focusing on the frontal chest radiograph, and we're going to leave the lateral chest radiograph for another time. So let's start by looking at the so-called moguls of the mediastinum, and the moguls of the mediastinum are those contours of the mediastinum that we can identify as distinct anatomic structures. So let's start by looking at the trachea. The trachea is this lucent tube extending from the, uh, the top of the radiograph in the lower neck to the carina. The carina is this triangular shaped structure that divides the trachea into the right and left main stem bronchi. And there's a normal deviation of the trachea to the right, and that is due to the aortic arch, which is right here. This is a corresponding CT image of the trachea showing the lucent tube, which should be smooth and regular, and its division into the right and left main stem bronchi, and the deviation of the trachea to the right because of the aortic arch here. And this is the aorta here. So this is the aortic arch, and this is the descending aorta. And it's important that you see and look for this contour on the frontal radiograph because if you lose this contour, that might mean that you have something like a mass or pneumonia in the left lower lobe that is obscuring it. And we'll talk more about that concept when we talk about the silhouette sign in class. And here's the corresponding CT image showing the, the aortic arch and the descending aorta. So it's important to remember that the descending aorta is a posterior structure in the chest. Just below the aortic arch is the pulmonary artery, and this is the pulmonary artery contour. It's a sort of straight line just next to the left hilum. So if this is the pulmonary artery and this is the aortic arch, then that would make this little divot here the aortopulmonary window or AP window for short and it should normally be a little concave divot um, in the contour of the mediastinum if you start to see it bulging out that can be a sign that there's enlarged lymph nodes and this is what it looks like on CT so this is the pulmonary artery there's a little bit of fat right next to the pulmonary artery making this line here uh, and this is the lung this is the aorta so this is the aorta, this is the AP window, and this is the pulmonary artery. And if we go down from there, then we have the left atrial appendage, which forms this contour here. It's the top part of the heart. And here is the corresponding CT showing the left atrial appendage. And then this is the left ventricle. So um, the left ventricle forms the majority of the left heart border on the frontal radiograph. And this is the corresponding CT showing the left ventricle, This is which is right here. And this is the interventricular septum. And this next border is the right atrium. Okay, and here it is on CT, the right atrium. And just above the right atrium is the SVC, which is this undulating line here. As you go superiorly on the SVC, you start to lose the contour, and that's because of superimposed structures on the frontal radiograph. One important thing about the SVC is its junction with the right atrium here is this inflection point right here, and that is called the cavoatrial junction or superior cavoatrial junction. And if you're ever putting in a pick or a central line, this is where you want your line to end up. And here's the SVC on the corresponding CT. And this right here is the cavoatrial junction. So um, now that you know the anatomy of the mediastinum a little bit better, I just want to talk about how I personally look at chest radiographs. And the way I look at it is actually the way that we just reviewed the anatomy. So I start from the midline structures, and then I go out from there. So the first thing I do is I look at the trachea and make sure that I see its normal deviation slightly to the right because of the aortic arch. I look at the airways in the right and left main stem bronchi. Then I move on from there to the aorta. So I look at the aortic arch, I look at the aortic descent, make sh making sure I could see it all the way down. 
Then I move to the pulmonary artery and I make sure that it's not enlarged. I look at the AP window, that space between the aorta and pulmonary artery, making sure there's no enlarged lymph nodes there. And then I look at the heart, so the left atrium, the left ventricle, and this inferior border, I've drawn it in, but it's usually not something that you can see on a frontal chest x-ray because of the similar density between the heart and the diaphragm. So inferiorly here, the heart touches the diaphragm, so you don't actually see this border. Um, and then I look at the right atrium, and um, of course the SVC, and then I look at the hyla. So the hyla are paired structures, and really what it, the hyla are are just the root of the organ. And there are other kinds of hyla as well. So you can talk about the renal hyla, the splenic hilum, and it's basically just that part of the organ where the vessels enter and exit. And in the case of the lungs, it's also where the bronchi um, sort of branch out into the lungs. So um, on the frontal radiograph, the left hilum is usually slightly higher than the right hilum, or they can be sometimes at the same uh, level, horizontal level. Uh, but usually the right hilum is not higher than the left hilum. And if that is the case, then you're probably looking at something abnormal. Um, but I just basically judge um, eyeballing it, looking to make sure that they are the same size and about the same density. And if you see one hilum as a little bit more dense than the other, that could mean that there are enlarged lymph nodes in that hilum, or that perhaps um, there's a mass or a nodule that is superimposed over the hilum in the lung. Okay, but most of the time when you see an enlarged hilum, it is due to lymph node enlargement. Sometimes when the hyla are enlarged, it can be due to pulmonary arterial enlargement. And then I look at the lungs. So I look at the lungs in two different ways. The first is I zoom in on the right lung and I look at that lung individually, looking for nodules, masses, pneumonia, reticulation, fibrosis. And um, I try to make sure to cover the blind spots, which are the lung apices, the hyla, and then behind the diaphragm. So it's not highlighted here, but there's lung that extends behind the diaphragm here, and you can see the vessels going behind the diaphragm. And then once I've evaluated one lung, I zoom out and I look at both lungs just to look for symmetry. So when I'm talking about symmetry, I'm, I'm making sure that they're the same density. I'm making sure that they're the same size generally. Um, usually the left is a little bit smaller because the way the heart is oriented, but about the same size. And then um, making sure that the vessel arborization is about the same. And next I look at the pleura. So the first thing I do is look for a pneumothorax, which is an abnormal air collection between the visceral and parietal pleura. In a patient who is standing up or sitting up, air is usually gonna collect at, here at the lung apex. And then I just follow the pleura down and make sure that there are no undulations. That could indicate either a loculated pleural effusion or perhaps a rib fracture. And then I follow it down to the costophrenic angles. And the costophrenic angle is where the diaphragm meets the chest wall. And this angle should be sharp. It shouldn't be blunted. There should be no meniscus there. If you do see that, that is a sign of pleural effusion. And then finally, I look at the bones and upper abdomen. And this is not something I wanna get into too much because this is the pulmonary module, but I do wanna point out that there's something called the paraspinal line that parallels the vertebral bodies. And if you see a bulge in the paraspinal line, that could mean that the patient has a mass, like a neurogenic tumor, or it could mean that there's a problem with the vertebral body, like osteomyelitis or a compression deformity. And that is about it. So that's how I look at chest x-rays. And it's important that you have your own approach for looking at chest x-rays and you do it the same way each time because that'll help you learn the anatomy better and it'll help you from missing something when you're looking at chest x-rays in the future. If you have any question about any of the topics that I've covered, feel free to email me or you can leave a comment on this video or you could just ask me in class. Thanks.